Hello my friends and welcome, we have more information plus satellite images from the Pskov military airfield, but I gonna tell you about it a little later. Let's first review the situation on the front lines because there we also have the update. So we have the information that the Ukrainian army propels towards Verbove. It is on the eastern part from Robotne. It took our guys a couple of days to penetrate the Russian defense lines in that area. The main thing that slows down Ukrainian counteroffensive are the mines before the Russian defense lines. The Russian defense lines are simply the trenches or dragon teeth that our guys were able to penetrate very easily because for those lines to be effective, someone had had to stay in those trenches and Russia after fighting left this area performing the goodwill gesture. Let's go for the timeline to check two of those days. So it was the day before yesterday and it is today. As you can see Ukraine moves pretty much forward. Based on the maps from the other resources Ukraine reached the Verbovy village and there Russia starts to counterattack but definitely they admit that it's very hard for them to resist against the assaulting Ukrainian forces. Speaking about the Novoprokopika village, as you can see, the Russian vector of the counterattack is absent. So what I guess happened over there, Russia is unable to send more reinforcements from the paratroop divisions that are based in Pskov. They are the most capable forces that Russia currently has. So by the next week I think that Ukraine will reach Novoprokopovka village and also Verbova. So there will be two of the fights in this area. Ukraine needs to expand on the sides as well and not just to propel southbound because it's the great risk for Ukrainian army being encircled because of the Russian side attacks or flank attacks you may call them. The enemy showed the video of Verbova village saying that they're shelling the Ukrainian positions but in that case they have already lost the part of Verbova village or it could be the Ukrainian attack. Sorry about the watermarks, I cannot get rid of them. So this is the Verbova village, it is quite long and the cameraman was standing here on the hill filming southwest and here were the explosions at the end of Verbova village. So if it is the Russian fire, they fire towards the end of Verbova, it means that all of that is under control by Ukrainian forces or it could be the Ukrainian fire on Russian positions. My friends, before we continue with Pskov case, let me tell you about the sponsor and the partner of my channel. Yes, as usual, it is the Atlas VPN. The best VPN service out there that highly respects our community. That's why they came out with a special offer for my followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month plus 6 months for free. This is the best deal on the market right now from all of the premium VPNs. It has military encryption standards strongly securing your data and your devices from being reached by government, unwanted ads and also hackers. Yes, you may say hackers, why do they need my account? Well, actually my friends, I got personal experience that my pilot blog channel dedicated to aviation was hacked, then I was using public Wi-Fi, all of my videos were deleted and after that hackers told me to send Bitcoin for them and they will open access to my own account. I didn't transfer anything and just started the new channel with the same name. And obviously after that case I use the VPN all of the time and for me personally Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. It has a security breach device monitoring feature so it alerts me that someone tries to reach my device then I use the public Wi-Fi. Then I see that message I disconnect from that public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN is very fast. It guarantees you the best streaming connection then you watch movies on Netflix and also by changing your virtual location you may get access to watch all of the movies all of the series on Netflix platform it helped me a lot so my friends please check out my personal link in the video description just below where you may find the Atlas VPN premium with a special offer for my followers where you may get it for 170 per month plus six months for free don't miss your chance to get this high quality product for that cheap price. All right, let's go to this picture. This is the Russian Illusion 76 that completely lost the canopy. I'll share it today on my Telegram channel 
What can I say? This is not what happened in Pskov. This photo was taken years ago and shared on the media today. Unfortunately, I also saw in mass media this particular photo. I thought, yes, if they say that it happened in Pskov, I should trust them, but never trust the information you see. Always cross-check. So I cross-check this image and my subscribers also told me that it could be from the very old accident and it did it is. But this is the picture from Pskov for sure last night. As you can see, not a big difference. The Illusion 76, we may see the silhouette of this airplane. This is the cockpit, couple of the engines on this side, the T-type of the tail unit and it's on fire. Russia officially confirms that they've lost four of the airplanes. According to some unconfirmed information, two of the airplanes were lost completely and four more damaged. The damages are quite severe. You may see the big hole in the fuselage of this Illusion 76, plus couple of the fire tracks nearby. For sure it wasn't the one on the previous picture, that one got the right wing on fire and for sure was totally kaput. This one will not fly either. If there is the tiny little dent in the construction of the airplane skin, for example, it will be grounded for a very long time. The special repairs should be done for those vehicles. And here, I don't think that they are capable to repair it. This is one more airplane and as you can see, fuselage is totally lost for both of those. This airplane from the first picture and this airplane from the other picture. Unfortunately, clouds cover the most part of the airfield, so we don't see for now the full picture. Hopefully tomorrow the weather will be good in Pskov and we'll see more units that were kaput. By the time I'm recording this video, Ukraine has launched one more big attack on Bransk. Also, explosions were reported in Feodosia, Crimea. Unfortunately, yesterday Russia also attacked the capital city of Kiev. At first, no casualties were reported, but this afternoon I saw the news that two civilians lost their lives because of the Russian attack. Again, as you see, Ukraine targets the Russian military infrastructure and Russia targets our civilian infrastructure. This is the very huge difference that everybody may see. Speaking more about those Russian airplanes that were targeted, there were lots of those produced in the Soviet Union and Russia still produces them, but not in that quantity. It is their best versatile heavy transport airplane. They also have the super heavy Antonov 1-4 to that was produced in Ukraine. That is why they also have problems maintaining those because the engines are produced also in Ukraine. Russia now is concentrated more on modernizing those airplanes rather than producing, because still there are many left from the Soviet Union. Most of them are not airworthy, however, so if we speak about the capable airplanes, Russia doesn't have lots of them as the Soviet Union had. So if we trust the information that they've lost six of the airplanes like that, it means that their Vadova paratroopers divisions are 50% less capable. And not just the airplanes were targeted, also the airfield infrastructure like fuel facilities and the ammunition. Also the military branch of paratroopers, their unit in Pskov was attacked. It all happened with just a single drone attack from Ukraine, I guess, and this is the most massive one, it was the most massive since the beginning of the war. The most capable Russian force, paratroopers, that should have fought in Ukraine. They fought already, but not that massive. So Putin had the idea to send them to protect the South front lines. And now I don't think that they are capable to send all of them very quickly. The Russian army moved out from Pskov all of the Air Wars airplanes, so they are based somewhere else. That is why Russia basically loses the concept of the high mobility forces paratroopers, because they are still based in Pskov, but the airplanes are based somewhere else, so they need to spend time to get to Pskov, then refuel, if they still have the fuel by the way, and only after that they are able to fly to their mission. Those are not the high mobility forces any longer. 
we have the information that Ukraine was able to modernize the iconic Neptune rockets that were capable to down the Russian Moskva ship. So now there are ground-to-ground -ground missiles, capable to fly for a very long distance. Some say that the range of this missile is around 800 kilometers now, and I have great doubts about it. Russia has started to use the barges to protect their carriage bridge, they sink them down to the bottom and they also think that it may protect the bridge. We'll see. It reminds me the history of Crimean War. In 1854, then Russians sank their ships to block the Sebastopol Bay against Turkish, British and France ships. But it didn't help, Sebastopol was taken by Allies. Unfortunately, we have the bad news. Two of the Ukrainian helicopters crashed near to Kramatorsk. So far, we are out of clue what happened over there, but what we know so far that Ukraine lost six of the pilots. Just not long time ago, the air crash happened in Zhytomyr Oblast, where two of the airplanes collided, killing three of the Ukrainian pilots. Here is one more crash quite far away from the front lines for the helicopters. So hopefully investigation will show us what happened over there. Was it the Russian air defense or the other stuff? This time Ukraine tells about the story, which is good, because before only Russian media sources started to tell about the crash of two of the L-39 airplanes. So we have much less speculations about this case. We need to speak about those events too. About the Wagner army, they have big problems right now because they are getting replaced by the Russian military. Basically by the Russian Defense Ministry, official forces and the Russian Ross Guard, which Putin controls personally. They complain that Africa is close for them and they have to find some other job. Also, they cannot fight in Ukraine any longer, so Wagner definitely is coming to Kaput. Speaking about Prigozhin's aviation accident, let's call it like that, Russia denied the participation from Brazilian side. It's actually the first time I see like that, that according to all the international rules and regulations, the country where the airplane was produced, Embraer, Brazil, is out of the case. Moreover, the Russian Aviation Commission will not investigate this case either. We have even the comment from Putin's speaker Peskov who said that it's not that case that should be investigated. That is why I strongly believe that this airplane was shot down by the Russian air defense and that's how Putin dealt with Prigozhin. For today we also have couple of updates from the military map. Not far away from Kurdimivka, this is the Bakhmut region I would say, so it was yesterday and it is today, it's just the map clarification. But here, not far from Avdiivka, near to Nevelske, Ukrainian army pushed forward a little, so it was yesterday, it is today, few hundred meters but still it is the movement. We also have the update about the enemy progress not far away from Belohorivka, so it was yesterday and it is today. Actually, this update comes from the last months. We had the report that Russian army moved in this area, but for how long? Also few meters. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video and also please check out my personal link in the video description just below where you may find the Atlas UPM Premium with a huge discount. I recommend it to you for sure. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.